Hi everyone, welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome to a brand new episode of Round the Corner. My name is Nina and I hope all of you are doing well today. If you haven't seen any of these episodes, it's a show where I predict what could happen in our upcoming fixtures in the Premier League, what to expect, who could start, who could be benched and score predictions as well. And if you did watch my uh, Round the Corner episode before the West Ham game, you would have seen that I predicted 3-1 to Chelsea. Safe to say I got the score right, but other way around. And I put my hands up, I got it wrong, but you know, we live and we learn. And to be fair, I don't think anyone expected that to be the game it was, but you know what, it's done, it's in the past. We can move past it. This show is about looking forward anyway, so that is exactly what we're going to do. Luton at home, Stamford Bridge on a Friday evening. There's nothing else I would rather do, guys, on a Friday night. I will be there. We will be there and welcome Luton, which I'm pretty sure is their first Premier League game. So that's going to be interesting as well to see Luton make an appearance at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, there we have it. It's just you know football is just crazy isn't it but yes guys so what we can expect here we go again it's like you can clip the west ham one where i said what's round the corner is three points we go again what's round the corner is three points for chelsea otherwise we're going to be sat here and we're going to be having some serious conversation so hold your memes hold your laughter things are going to get better okay you know we don't always start off the best and I think people just got carried away. Yes, we have spent so much money, which is why everything is just so much higher and elevated in terms of expectations. You know, people are saying an 115 million signing should not be taking long to fit in. You know, if you cost a lot of money, then that means you hit the ground running, you're scoring goals or assisting, getting involved, making a an 100% tackle statistic and a 100% uh, jewels won or whatever. Look, guys. As good as these signings are going to be for Chelsea, they are going to need a little bit of time to settle in, to, you know, hit the ground running. And we can't be pointing fingers at the manager already. Yes, he did get a few tactical things wrong against uh, West Ham. Hopefully we're going to correct it. Although, although, I think our chances of seeing a very, an entirely different squad is very slim. And what I mean by that is, you know, Sterling put on a great performance. I think he makes the starting eleven. even though I would have loved to see Noni Madueke and it's something I've been itching to see. And of course, um, he's going to want to reward Raheem Sterling with that and let him build on it because he was short of scoring or short of assisting because no one was receiving his crosses. But I think if he starts against Luton... He's looking at a minimum of two goals, in my opinion, because he can expose them defensively. They're not going to be as strong as West Ham's defence, let's be honest. And I reckon when he is trying to dribble through three, four players, he probably does. Um, so, yeah, but I do think that Luton are, having said that, going to play defensive football. So we will see about that. But like I said, if Sterling starts to bag his goals, you know, I think Pochettino is going to be fleshing out as much as he can from Raz because we paid an expensive fee, he underperformed for us last season and he's literally one of our veterans in the squad. Yet he's only, I think he's 26 or 27, not too sure, I think he's somewhere in that bracket there, which makes him one of our most uh, <laughs> experienced, if you'd like to say, and oldest players in the squad. So that's interesting. You know, of course, he's going to be um, thrown in there in hopes to make an impact. He's not necessarily going to get benched over some of our new players instantly. And it's fair enough. I understand the point of view. Yes, we need to give him minutes. He's that player that has got lots of experience, plenty of trophies, literally more Premier Leagues than the whole squad's put together as of now. So, yeah, I mean... You can only expect that Raz is going to be in that starting eleven, so I have no issues with that. I've been overcritical, but you proved me wrong, Raz. You proved me wrong. Just continue doing what you are, score us some goals, get us some assists, and just continue being involved. So yeah, I think Poch starts Raz against Luton, and 
Speaking of the other side on our wing, apparently Mikhailo Midrick has not been to training today for some reason. He's been very active on Instagram. If you've seen his stories, he's been posting very optimistic and uh, uplifting quotes and messages on his story. Thanks Midrick, we love you for that, but show us something on the pitch as well. Or turn up to training. We don't obviously know what has happened there, but apparently, according to sources, that is the case. So I think I would like Madrid to start, but then again, if he's not been turning up to training, then maybe Ben Chilwell plays left wing again, which shocking, by the way. Anyways, like I said, it's all about the future, not the past. And yeah, so I don't know if Madrid uh, is going to be available in this squad or what is actually going on with him. Um, we will find out. But if he is available, I would like him to start because, like I said, he only came on because of Carney's injury. And for me, Madrid needs to get better and he will do so by starting and playing and not getting chucked into a game where we're chasing, um, you know, an equaliser or we're holding on to dear life or whatever. He needs to start so he can build on momentum. And I think that's the best way to get the best out of Midrick. And yes, the end product isn't there. And sometimes he is very frustrating to watch. But I'm very lenient with Midrick and I'm going to give him so much more time before I jump on the meme wagon with some of the other, it's mostly rival fans, but I am seeing some Chelsea fans getting a little bit impatient with Midrick as well. But I think he needs starts to get better, guys. Let me know your thoughts, though, down in the comments. What is your opinion on Midrick? So, yeah, of course, Carney's injured now. I mean, what an actual shame because I think Carney makes the starting 11 again. Had he not been injured, we have seen that Poch has unlocked a spark from Carney over pre season, started against Liverpool, started against West Ham, bagged his first Chelsea goal, which was a superb finish, by the way. The way he had the confidence to do that, I think. Had it been anyone else, they would have just looked to make that pass. But fair enough, um, not only Carney, wish you all the best, speedy recovery. But it will be interesting to see who starts. Maybe Andre Santos will be in the squad. Who knows? Who knows? But I think Pochettino is going to start making some rotations as well and trying out. I mean, he's got no choice now, um, but trying to, you know, have something different there. And saying that, I think Pochettino will revert back to a back four. Although it is Luton we're playing. It's a tricky one, guys. Let me know what you're thinking because obviously we saw that last week's system didn't quite work. It, it didn't get us anywhere and we were exposed time and time again. Um, so does Pochettino revert back to a back four? We will see. And if he does, then is Chile starting as left back? Is he going to be left wing? What is going on, guys? I mean, experiments, yeah, all welcome. But can they make sense as well? Um, and yeah, Ian Matson. let's talk about Ian Matson because I think he's kind of been, you know, brushed onto the carpet following from pre-season because we haven't seen him play in the Premier League. And I think what better opportunity than to play versus Luton? I think Ian Matson might start, but where does he start, guys, is another question. I mean, Pochino tried out so many different things in pre-season that it's just, you know, Matson was one of those players that was very, very versatile as well. So <clears throat> we will see where Ian Matson starts, but we saw a great assist from him as well. So can he perhaps get involved in build-up play and help us bag some goals? Could he bag a goal of his own as well? I don't know. How do you guys feel about Ian Matson? I think he's a young, talented player. And I think, you know, Poch made the right decision to let him develop in um, the first team as well. But obviously hoping that he gets some minutes as well. Nicholas Jackson to be up top, of course, again, like, come on, you know, he is our striker now and he will get to start. We are waiting on those goals and I do firmly believe that they will come. I really do because I think Jackson is just that player that has a great work ethic and the way we have seen him, even against Liverpool, dribble through players and stay on his feet, even after getting barged and bodied, he can stay on his feet and still, you know, continue up until the end and make that shot. I think against Luton, he can absolutely maximise that, push it further, work on his own as well to, to get through players and to make those runs in behind and bag himself a goal. I think Jackson has to score on oh, Friday, I forgot what day it was. I think Jackson must and has to score on Friday because it just makes things a lot better for us as well. It gives us a little bit of time to relax because if he's not scoring against Luton as well, then maybe we feel a bit anxious. Um, yeah, I don't know because, of course, yeah, had some good moments against Liverpool, 
struggled a little bit more against West Ham, but I think equally he was all right and he did play decently um, as opposed to other players. Um, but yeah, I think he should bag a goal against Luton, guys, because yeah, like I'm repeating myself. Anyway, waffle, waffle, waffle. Um, so yeah, and it's safe to say that we've got very inexperienced back line. Now, um, Thiago Silva is literally twice the age of <laughs> his partners on his left and right, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's just how we get better. I think Levi Colwell has got a lot to improve on um, following from the last two games as well. Made some wrong passes. Some of his passes just seems a little bit lethargic to me as well. Just didn't really have much intent. And yeah, I, I couldn't quite see um, what it is Colwell was doing. At times he was outpaced, outplayed, struggled. Um, hopefully he is a lot more strong in that sense against Luton. And yeah, he's young, he's going to make mistakes just because he was brilliant for Brighton doesn't mean he's going to be brilliant for Chelsea off the bat. That is what I said after the West Ham game and I still believe that is the case. So I think Colwell starts, I mean, he, we brought him in now, obviously Badia is still injured, so Colwell starts um, regularly now, I guess. And it's good, it's a good thing because he gets to, you know, partner up there with um, Thiago Silva and yeah just have that centre-back partnership solidified at the back. And last but not la la least, least, guys, I can't talk today. Last but not least, let's talk about our 150 million British pound sterling, British, British, 115 million um, record-breaking fee Moises Caicedo signing, which we were so excited to see but disappointed us with his debut. But it's fine. I don't think we judged the guy off one game, surely. He was rusty. He came off, hadn't played football in so long, hadn't been to training and was thrown into a game where we're behind, where we're playing away, where we're in a hostile environment and he's expected to, you know, just like that, make an impact. Yes, it was an overly disappointing performance, but I think he builds on that and he gets better. We're now seeing that he is involved in training and, you know, will continue doing so. So I think it's a start for Caicedo on Friday and slowly and steadily him and Enzo can start working on that partnership that we've been manifesting for about three months now. So, yeah. That's from me, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. Score prediction as well. My score prediction. Oh, God, I can see this getting clipped already. I'm going to go for a... I'm going to go 3-1 again. No, actually, I'm going to go 3-0. I don't want us to concede against Luton. I'm going to go for a 3-0 Chelsea win. There you have it. We can do that, surely. Come on, it's doable. It's achievable. Is it, guys? Let me know down in the comments below. I could be very terribly wrong with this one. But, yes, I think we score some goals, maybe... Keep a clean sheet for some self-esteem as well. And yes, we can be much more confident moving forward. Bag our first three points of the season and relax a little bit. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Like, subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV if you haven't done so already. Check out my personal channel, Nina's Chelsea Corner, and I will see you in the next one. Up the Chelsea.